on Fox Henderson versus Melendez conference call. As a reminder, today's conference is being recorded. At this time, for opening remarks and introductions, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Schaller. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC on Fox Henderson versus Melendez media conference call. UFC Fox, UFC Saturday, Saturday, April 20th, live from the HP Pavilion in San Jose. Today on the call, we are joined by UFC President Dana White, UFC lightweight champion Benson Henderson, Strikeforce lightweight champion Gilbert Melendez, former two-time UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir, and Strikeforce heavyweight Grand Prix champion Daniel Cormier. At this time, I will turn it over to Dana White. Dana? Good morning, everybody. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate your time. Uh, go ahead. You can ask the first question. If anyone would like to ask a question, you may do so by pressing star followed by the number one on your telephone keypad at this time. Please make sure that your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. We will take our first question from Kelly Tidwell of Fighters Hub. Hi, um, this message is for Benson. Um, with all the super talk and potential um, Jose, Jose Aldo matchup, um, are you actually looking past Gilbert? Uh, I'm uh, definitely not looking past Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert's tough as heck. He might not have like the biggest name. There might be bigger uh, fights, fights, and all that blah 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 out there. But I know how tough Gil is. I know he's uh, the Strike Force champ, rated you know top two, top three on the planet for a long time for a reason. Uh, I'm not looking past him at all. Not even close. Okay, and one more question, if I may, for um, Cormier and Gilbert. Um, with the recent success of the Strike Force fighters and currently in the UFC, do you guys feel any pressure coming up into your UFC debut? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, no, nah, no pressure at all. Keeping um, a little bit of confidence, you know, seeing all the guys do well, it's just a little juice of energy. Um, you know, we're going to do our best out there. DC, are you out there? <laughs> Daniel, will you go ahead and uh, and answer that question regarding the uh, success of Strike Force fighters in the UFC thus far? And this is the operator. It looks like Mr. Cormier is disconnected. We will actually, he's just rejoined. Daniel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, Kelly, would you go ahead and re ask that question for Daniel? Yeah, not a problem. Daniel, with the recent success of Strike Force Fighters, um, do you feel any um, added pressure coming into your UFC debut? No, you know, uh, those guys have done well. You know, as Dana stated, they were hungry to fight in the big show, and just as we are. I don't feel any pressure. You know, I'm going to go out and fight like I normally do. Um, but we're all UFC fighters now. You know, there's no uh, weight on my shoulder to carry uh, the organization. Uh, strike force or anything, you know, so I'm just going to go out and fight my fight and uh, let everything fall into place. I think if there's pressure, it's being in the co-main event of a Fox card, and I've dealt with that, so uh, I don't feel any pressure at all, actually. Fine. Thank you guys for your time. And once again, that is star followed by the number one. If anyone else would like to ask a question at this time, we will go next to Luke Meredith of the Associated Press. I, and this question is for uh, Dana White. A, a little bit off topic, there was an essay uh, released by USA Wrestling this week that, that mentioned prominently that one way wrestling could really modernize itself ahead of the IOC vote later this year is to be more like the UFC. And so I guess that leads me to ask you a two-parter. One, uh, what's your take on maybe what traditional wrestling can do to see success following what you guys have done? And, and two, has the UFC reached out to USA Wrestling in any way to sort of say, you know, hey, here's you know, financial, be it or otherwise, or ways to help of, of ahead of what they're going through? Well, that's funny because that when, when we heard that it was being uh, yanked from the Olympics, that's what I said. I said, you know, it needs to be more fan-friendly. It needs to be more exciting. Um, and, yeah, I have, I've met with a lot of the top guys in wrestling. They Actually, when did I, I met with them last Tuesday. 
And, uh, yeah, the UFC is, is uh, joining the fight to help save Olympic wrestling. Not just Olympic wrestling. I mean, colleges are dropping wrestling now. High schools have been dropping wrestling for a long time. Myself, I personally have funded tons of uh, wrestling programs, and the UFC has funded tons of wrestling programs for high school kids. Okay. Um, and, and just to follow up on that, um, are, there, are there any concrete plans as to what you guys might do with Save Olymp- Olympic Wrestling, or is it just now in the discussion phase? Yeah, it's in the discussion phase. These guys are going out and uh, fighting the fight. And whatever they need from me, you know, I, I think what I could do, and not, not just me in the UFC, but I think other companies like Bellator too, you know, Viacom owns Bellator, and, and I think Viacom would be would – be, uh, probably interested in, in, in helping fight the fight, too. Thanks, Anna. Yep. And once again, that is star followed by the number one for questions. We will go next to Heidi Fang of MMA Fight Corner. Hi, I'm experiencing a little bit of static here on my phone. I hope you guys can hear me. Thank you for the time. Um, for Gilbert and for Benson, uh, everything about you guys is similar on paper. How important is it for each of you to prove who's the undisputed champion in this fight? Uh, first for Vincent, if you would, please. Yeah, me, I'm not really too worried about proving, like, this or that. I just want to go out there and win every fight. It doesn't matter. There's always going to be new and different stipulations, new and different reasons to win. Like, oh, well, I want to win this fight. It was like... He was talking about my mom, oh, I really want to win this fight because of this reason or that reason. I don't really need any ulterior motives. I'm a pretty uh, highly self-motivated person. Uh, I just want to go out there and win every single fight. It doesn't matter. I don't care who the guy is, what the extra stuff on top of it is. I just want to go win, period. Thank you. And for Gilbert, the same question, if you would, please. Yeah. Um, you know, champion versus champion, it's a neat thing for me, but... Um, you know, I, I feel like uh, in this case, you know, Benson's the champ, and, you know, I'm coming to the Octagon, a new organization. You know, I fought the Dream Champ. I fought the Judo ch- the shooto Champ. I fought a lot of different champs and different rules. It's a, a neat opportunity for me. Um, you know, I'm definitely prepared. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. But um, a long time I've been trying to prove I'm number one, and this is my opportunity. So I'm going to take advantage of it. And just to follow up on that, Gilbert, uh, since Benson uh, last fought Nate Diaz, does that make it more important to you, does it fuel you more to really want to win this fight? Um, of course. You know, I'd love to avenge my friend. You know, I'd love to represent for my team. And, um, and, and yeah, you know, I got to see it firsthand what Benson's all about, front row. And, uh, of course, I, I, would love to, I would love to get that for myself and for my teammates. And one last question, if I could, for Dana. Uh, I don't know if you've spoken at all with Dan Hardy since the announcement uh, came out about him having to withdraw from the Matt Brown fight, and I'm just curious to see maybe where he stands right now with staying with the yeah. UC and the organization. Yeah, we talked to him. Uh, Lorenzo and I called him last week, and, you know, he, he's got some personal stuff going on right now with his family, but we're going to send him out to, to literally the best heart doctor in the country out in Los Angeles um, when he's ready to go, and we're going to get a second opinion and get him checked out. Okay, thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you. And once again, that is star followed by the number one to ask a question. We will go next to Max Engel of Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, hi, this question is for Dana. Dana, if you've been asked this before, I apologize. Um, I I've been on beating on this drum for a while. Are you guys any closer to hosting uh, a UFC big event at Cowboy Stadium in 2013, or are we looking now at 2014, or is it even on the agenda anymore? Well, yeah, obviously, if we end up doing one of these super fights, Dallas, Texas Stadium is is one of the places we're looking at. So it depends on what fight. You know, if you look at, at the super fight possibilities. It's, it's George St. Pierre who just fought and won. Anderson's got a fight and win his fight. And Johnny Bones Jones has got a fight coming up in a couple of weeks that he's got to win. So once, uh, once these guys get past their next opponents, we can start looking at what everybody wants to do next. Is there any chance we could think possibly 2013 is realistic, Dana? Or is that, given we're now in April of 2013, overly ambitious? 
Well, let's say this year. Let's say this year we did a super fight. I'll just, I'm just throwing it out there. This is, you know, just, just, for, just to, to make a point. Say you got George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva, right? Yeah. We'd be looking at Vegas. You always look at Vegas. Dallas, Texas Stadium, uh, Toronto, or somewhere in Brazil. So those, 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 those destinations really haven't changed for your ideas of a super fight. And no. Nope. They've come, okay. All right, Dana, thank you very much. That's all I need. All right, thank you. And we will take our next question from Damon Martin of BleacherReport.com. Uh, yeah, my first question is for Gilbert. Uh, you know, in the lead up to this fight on the promos that ran over the weekend during UFC on Fuel 9, they, they referred to you a lot of times as the top contender, the number one contender. Uh, and a lot of people had an issue with that because they, they view you as a champion. Does that, does that fuel you? Do you pay attention to any of that? Uh, Damien, not, not, not really. Um, you know, I, I just, it doesn't bother me. You got to pick your battles in the sport, and that's not one of them for me. I, I feel like I am somewhat of a challenger walking into new territory. It's a whole new organization, a whole different, a whole different thing, different size cage, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Ben Henderson is the champ of the UFC. And I'll ask the same question to, to Benson, obviously. I know you got a lot of respect for Gilbert. Are you viewing this kind of as a, you know, champion versus champion? I know you're not going to take home the Strike Force title necessarily, but you know what I mean. Nah, uh, you guys know me, Damien. I, I don't care at all about belts and all that stuff. Like, it's nice and all that. I will take the belt and everything. But going into any fight, I don't care whether it's your, your first fight for the UFC, your first time on the main card, your first time, you know, as a main event, uh, it all doesn't matter. You just have to win. I, I can't emphasize that enough. It doesn't matter whether there's belts on the line, whether it's a winner go home, loser leaves the UFC, or, or whatever they, whatever that's called. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. All that's just you know extra shenanigans. Uh, so fight. I don't care. I'm gonna go out there and win every single fight. That's it. And a, and a question for Daniel Cormier. Uh, DC leading up to this fight, obviously, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, you know, the, 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 the part we talked about last week about not finishing fights. Now there's a new statement from Frank coming out talking about taking one of your limbs coming home. Do you look at this as more hype around the fight, like a good way to build a fight between you two, or, or does any of it hit home for you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm real big on, on fighting with emotion. You know, I'm not going to fight with any emotion. There's not anything Frank can ever say about me that's uh, going to make me fight a fight that's more dangerous. Um, I, I really don't know. You know, I've, I've stated time and time again that, that I think uh, there's only a select few individuals who can take the beatings that Frank has taken and, and all this stuff and still continue to be the way he is. Uh, doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight my fight. And uh, I, I'm hoping it's promotion because uh, if um, if that's the way his mind works, and that's very uh, disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. We'll take our next question from Michael Mardanez of MiddleEasy.com. My question is for Gilbert. Gil, uh, what was going through your head during the post-fight press conference when uh, Nate and Benson were up on the podium? I looked over and I, I saw you, and it looked like there was fire in your eyes. But I was just curious as to what you were thinking at that time. Well, um, you know, when your buddies fight, you can't help but get a little emotion out there and passionate and. Uh, you know, you know, you you're you're, uh, you're bummed for your friend when he fights, and um, you know, if you can back your friend up, y you will. You know, and uh, at that point, I was like, give me the opportunity, you know, to avenge my friend, give me the opportunity to to fight this dude. I I can I can do it, you know, and that was kind of going through my head, and you know, and I was just licking my chops, hoping to get the opportunity, and um, and I did. Nate went along to say that no one's going to stop Gilbert Melendez. What's that mean to you to hear that from him? And, and how important was he during this training camp for you? Yeah, you know, Nate's my boy. We're like best friends. You know, we came up together in this sport. So um, well, it means a lot. You know, he backed me up and everything. And, um, you know, he's been coming out a lot, doing a lot of wrestling, a lot of Muay Thai out here with us and, and doing a bunch of stuff. He's, he's very important always, you know, and um, a lot at this camp. But um, so is my so is my whole team. All right, thanks for the time, Gil. Thanks. Once again, that is star followed by the number one to ask a question. We will go next to Dave Divert of Post Media News. 
Hey guys, uh, thanks for the time. Uh, just a couple quick ones for Dana. Um, another fight uh, on the card, uh, Canadian uh, up and comer, uh, Jordan Mean. Uh, give me your thoughts, if you could, on uh, on on his uh, on his debut and where you uh, where you see him right now. Yeah, well, obviously we, we were very impressed uh, with his performance, and that's why when this fight fell apart, we we, we put him in. We we replaced uh, we, we replaced him because. We were very blown away by his last fight. We like this kid. And I think him and Matt Brown's going to be a great fight. All right. Um, another one. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Matt uh, Mitrione. Uh, yep. A little bit of, yeah. Um, how disappointed were you in, uh, in, in that, whole, uh, that whole affair? Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's just a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? First of all, he, he, he didn't even need to be doing an interview. And, and I'm going to talk to these guys. I'm going to talk to these guys. The only time these guys really need to be doing interviews is leading up to fights. Uh, you know, it ended up being a, a nightmare for him. What was the point of that interview? There was no point in it. Now, now it's caused him a bunch of headache and problems, caused us a bunch of headache and problems for no reason whatsoever. He had just fought. He, you know, he wouldn't fight again for another few months. And he's still over there and enjoying himself in Sweden. What was the point in doing that interview? And, and, you know, what was the upside in that interview? There was none. No upside. Okay. All right. Uh, last one for you. Um, uh, Fox, uh, uh, Fox Sports, uh, the, uh, the, the debut event uh, in Boston. Uh, any, you know, any, any word on what you're working on for, uh, uh, for that card? Obviously, you guys and Fox will want to uh, kick things off you know, in, in, in fine or in big form anyway, uh, anything that you guys are working on. But we still have time, you know, it, it's still early and uh, there's a lot of fights that are going to happen before we even start putting that card together. But obviously, yeah, it's the launch of Fox sports one. Uh, we're doing a huge fight in, in, in Boston and they have, uh, that's the day that the Red Sox and the Yankees are playing and we're going to do some really cool stuff. It's going to be a huge event. Um, and we're going we're gonna to put together a great card, but we don't have anything together yet. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Jeffrey Harris of 411mania.com. Uh, thank you all uh, for joining us today. Uh, first question uh, for Frank. Uh, uh, when fight time comes, it'll have been uh, 11 months since your last fight. Uh, are you concerned about any uh, ring rust going into this fight against an opponent like Daniel Cormier? No, not really. I think in the heavyweight division, uh, fight sometimes gets spread out. Yeah, you know, especially the higher you climb with the bladder, it's harder to find uh, matchups that uh, you know help you move forward in your career. Uh, and for Daniel, uh, now that uh, Cain Velasquez is champion uh, again, uh, are you thinking about a uh, light heavyweight? And if you were to go down there, are you confident you can make that weight, or do you need to try a test cut? Well, you know. Uh, I've got a, such an important fight on my hands in this next one um, that that I really try and I've kind of strayed away from that thought process. You know, I'm not really thinking about uh, the 205-pound division right now. Um, I've stated time and time again that I want to be the UFC champion, and uh, if that means going down to the weight below, then I would do that. But uh, I have the toughest fight of my career in front of me in two weeks, and, and I can't focus on that at right now. You know, for me to have stated that, I would consider it means that I'm confident that I can make the weight. But right now, my sole focus is on Frank Mir. And uh, once we get past Frank, then we can talk about that other stuff. Great, thank you. And uh, for Gilbert Melendez, do you feel like you have to make a statement at all, considering um, your uh, states uh, have been uh, unsuccessful in uh, several fights in uh, UFC title bouts? Do you feel like you're, you know, you're the last bastion of hope for Team Cesar Gracie to bring home a UFC title? Um, I mean, yeah, thanks for the pressure. Um, you know, uh, like I hope, you know, I hope to win the title for my team, you know, but I try not to, I really try not to put too much pressure on myself again. You know, I just, I go out there and fight and, you know, and fight my fight. But, um, you know, I think it's a great accomplishment for my whole team just to even get title fights, you know, not many teams can say that uh, Dave Terrell, Gil Castillo, Nick, Jake, and, and Nate have all had title fights. That's great for our team. So, if anything, it's an accomplishment for our team. But, um, yeah, I'd love to be, 
able to bring that title back uh, to the gym and, and share it with those guys. So, uh, but um, no, no added pressure. Thank you very much. And once again, that is star followed by the number one to ask a question. We will go next to Victoria Burakeva of Russian Chicago Magazine. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us, joining us on the call. My uh, question is for Frank Mir and for Daniel. Uh, both of you guys in each of your camps have Russian Dagestani guys bringing with you. Uh, my question is next. What all of them bring you to the table? What new can you get from training with them? And how was the training with the Russian guys? Like Habib Nurmagomedov for you, Daniel, and Frank for some of the uh, guys like Azaman Tashimov and other guys at Abyss Tibet and Baladia and UFT. Well, I, I know personally the guys at my camp, you know, Adlon and, uh, you know, Ruslan, those guys are just they're animals. They come in, they're all smiles, and they're happy, and they're in good mood, they're dancing around, and then all of a sudden the bell rings, and they're out there launching guys around, and they've got a phenomenal background in grappling, and they throw some of the craziest kicks I think I've ever seen in my life. So uh, I think it's an asset to have them around. I enjoy their uh, work ethic when it's time to train. They're all business, and then when, uh, as soon as it's over with, uh, no matter what, if someone gets knocked out, choked out, thrown to the air, it seems like uh, it's all forgotten, and now it's just back to uh, being buddies and hanging out, you know, and then the war is again tomorrow. Yeah, well, training with Khabib's been great. You know, I think he falls in line with what we have here at AKA. You know, he came in and found his spot, never, uh, never stepped on anybody's toes, and just works extremely hard. You know, he's completely focused. And uh, his goals are the same as everyone else in this gym. You know, we have a sole goal, a sole focus, and that's to be the best in the world. And Khabib falls in line with that, man. He uh, he walks back and forth from his hotel to the gym two days, uh, two times a day. Uh, he runs in the morning. Uh, he, he does everything the right way. And it's, uh, it's easy to learn from a guy like that because you see him doing it. You see his commitment to getting better. And uh, it, just, it just actually, he completely fits for what we're all trying to accomplish in this gym. Thank you very much. And my next question is to Dana. Uh, Dana, is Russia still in the map for 2013? Or there was, there was some talk that maybe Ultimate Fighter will be coming to Russia. Could you do any clarification if there is any on that subject, please? Yes, we're still working on it. You know, we're, we're working on a bunch of these different territories. Sometimes things take longer than they, you know, than they expect. For instance, if anything, we should have had a Ultimate Fighter Canada, you know, a while ago. But we're still working on that, too. So, yeah, we're working on... China, India, Canada, and Russia. Thank you so much, everybody, and good luck. And we will take our next question from AJ Perez of FoxSports.com. Hey, Dana. Obviously, you guys are going to the home of the Strike Force. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, next uh, next week. You know how how has the integration gone? You know, if you, you obviously owned them for several um, from a couple of years now, and you merged them together a few months ago. How do you overall how how smoothly has it gone? And what do you think of pretty much all the talent you got? In this it's gym? been awesome. You know, it's it's been it's been a great experience. I, I love you, you know you hear me every time a, a, a new guy from Strike Force fights in the UFC. You know th these guys are are hungry, and I said it before, and I'll say it again. Some horrible shit happened to those guys. They were sitting on the shelf for a long time, didn't make money, didn't get the fight. Uh, it, it, it was frustrating for me. I can imagine how it felt for them. So uh, I love it. I love when the Strike Force guys uh, uh, fight, and especially for the first time. Cool, thanks. Yep. And this does conclude today's Q&A session. I would now like to turn the call back to Mr. Scheller for closing remarks. Thank you very much, and thanks, everybody, for your time today. Once again, Fox UFC Saturday, Saturday, April 20th, from the HP Pavilion in San Jose. The main event, champion versus champion Benson Henderson, the UFC lightweight champion versus strike force champion Gilbert Melendez, as well as Frank Mir versus Daniel Cormier. Before we get to the schedule for next week, I just wanted to run through, obviously, the Ultimate Fighter season finale um, is joining us tomorrow uh, tonight. Don't want to miss that. See who makes it to Saturday's finale. For media purposes, on Thursday, April 11th, the event that I'm about to announce is closed to the public, but we are encouraging media members to come on out. It's the Ultimate Fighter finale open workout at the Ultimate Fighter gym here in Las Vegas from 12 to 3 p.m. Participating will be both tough finalists, Uriah Faber, Scott Jorgensen, Misha Tate, Kat Singano, Travis Brown, and Gabriel Gonzaga. 
And then as we roll into San Jose next week, our first big media event will be Thursday, April 18th at the HP Pavilion. That event is closed to the public, but it is Henderson versus Melendez media availability featuring the entire main card from the Fox broadcast, as well as Dana White. That event kicks off at 11 a.m. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you to Benson, Gil, Daniel, and Frank, and all of the media who joined us today. We will see you in a few days for the Ultimate Fighter finale.